This brief video covers IDEA surveys. What do you need to know about them? The school gets information from students through a variety of means. One of the ways they get information is through the surveys at the end of the course. And we've reached our end, so we get to talk about the end of the course. In looking for the IDEA surveys, they look a little bit like this. I've got one enlarged here so you can take a look at it and see what it actually looks like for another class. This is for Steve's class. Steve is a friend of mine. I can use his little email. But in your emails, you will have filed away uh, a reminder, and people easily overlook it. That's why I show you one right here, where it asks you to fill out a survey for a class, and then gives you a link. And that link closes after a time, but it has a select window when it is open. Uh, it's a very innocent uh, or really innocuous looking email. People easily overlook it, and so I highlight it here so that you might notice it and pay attention. What do you need to know about idea surveys? Uh, how do they benefit you? In a way, they, of course, don't. Uh, except they give you a chance, uh, some students to vent, some students to give feedback. Oftentimes, uh, like so much of the feedback that happens online, they're skipped over. And it's the only reason why I mention it now. Uh, they are hard to recognize, they're hard to find later if I tell you to go look for them. Uh, but I appeal to you in your sense of fairness, because as the old expression goes, the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. Uh, that means that uh, uh, we get feedback, and sometimes it's not representative sometimes, uh, and uh, the feedback that we do get doesn't give us as much as we'd like. So we really have to invite people, sometimes uh, actually take them over to the computer lab to do this, but I won't do that for this class, obviously, because I'm just appealing to your better nature to see whether you wouldn't take an interest in giving us some feedback. What I mean about fairness here is that our survey results sometimes are not very accurate. They can be very blunt instruments, and that's why I try to explain what happens to them. Fairly easy to do that in a campus class, but not so much in an online class. Uh, for example, one a issue of fairness that uh, has struck teachers and administrators alike is that the administration gives these surveys out to all students, even if the student has dropped out during the first week or so of class, or even hasn't attended at all. And that means really that in the eyes of the state, the opinions from students who stopped attending during the first week are sometimes treated in the same way as your opinions people who've been plugging away at the class, trying to improve on their work, trying to do better, trying to work. I don't think that's very fair. I think your opinions, as we just got done with the chapter on opinions, are more authoritative. So if you'd please, please uh, attend to this, you're actually doing something very beneficial for us because if the people who only stopped in to the first day of class or didn't even do that much are giving feedback on our classes, which sometimes happens. Uh, and they're the only voices that are heard. How representative is that? That doesn't give us much at all. So, what about fairness? Brace yourself for a shock. Sometimes uh, when we get to fairness uh, and dealing with feedback from students, we have to acknowledge that there'll be some students who have uh, very different expectations about what a class can be or do. And sometimes that set of expectations matches reality and sometimes it doesn't. We designed this class at the request of students through a survey like this. We tried to get as much feedback as we wanted, uh, as we could from students, and they give us feedback as to whether we should improve our program or change our class. And that's why a very quick class was created. It may be at some future time that we have such a quick class that students uh, literally drive through campus to pick up their transcripts or, or even diplomas. But at this point, we're simply trying to condense the class to give the most meaningful parts of what we do. Uh, and that's why we've designed the classes that we have. Of course, there has to be some limit because there are some non-negotiables. Uh, uh, there are some things that I have to have uh, and that the school has to have to maintain its integrity and, and teach actual classes. But we do try to respond to students, and hence we have a shorter class where we tried to cut down to the essentials. What do I mean when I talk about expectations? Sometimes students get into the class like this and they expect that uh, there'll be so much discussion board and that I can grade the discussion board and even pass you on discussion board. And really that's not the nature of the class. The nature of the class is for the formal writing assignments. That is what the state has dictated, that's what the school has dictated, and really that's what the teacher has to re represent to students. And so, and hence we get the assignments that we do and that we're able to uh, offer you and that we give you an opportunity to show your skills and to work on your skills through the course of the term. In this case, it may not be that uh, you got the, all the videos that you wanted uh, or even got uh, the readings that uh, you might have gotten in a campus class, but we would try to do our best. So uh, have that in mind. 
I tell my campus students that sometimes students have wild expectations indeed. Uh, for example, they'll expect us to be able to take field trips to Diamond Gyms or Solid Gold or to some crazy place like that. And that's not really what we do, of course. We have to really represent our field and uh, represent the discipline that we're uh, here for. And so, within the confines of those expectations, talk to us. Give us some information. You also know that uh, we'll hear negative stuff. We always do. And that's fine. I'm not worried about that. But if we don't have people who are also uh, meek, virtuous, and who have been working hard, participate, then we really miss out. As it says here, meek meekness may be a virtue, but it'll also uh, not really tell us how we are doing or tell anyone how the class is working for them. So really focus on the positive things or things that did work for you feedback that was uh, sincere, that did help you get to the next step, that's what we want to definitely hear from, uh, uh, because of course we we'll always have the alternative. What we want to try and have is people giving us I serious, honest feedback for what we can do to improve the classes. Uh, so don't let the negative vo voices dominate. What is true in life is also true in the class. We hear from the cranks, uh, and we'll hear again from them this semester probably, but there are those students who really did pitch in, and if that's you, and you sit back right now, we're missing out. We're missing out on you, and I want to invite you to not, to not, uh, or not to miss this opportunity. Consider yourself helping that future student. That's what we use our feedback for. That's what you have an opportunity to do right now. Within reason, offer helpful feedback. I remember once offering a chance for students to give feedback. And one student drew a nice little stick figure of me and then drew himself right behind me sticking a nice uh, stick figure knife in my back. Uh, less helpful uh, and also disregarded because, of course, administrators, when they see comments like that, know to disregard them right away. Uh, I wish kind of they thought to follow up on them, especially after we see violence in the news at, on school campuses. Nevertheless, if you show that your sincere feedback is meant sincerely, that really helps and uh, things other than stick figures will be counted and you will be counted. Thank you for helping us do our jobs. Thank you for giving us feedback. It's really unappreciated in the world, but we do appreciate it. And thank you for your efforts this term. I wish you the best, of course. You don't have to cease uh, an email that you're thinking about sending me after the term is over or a check-in about a previous assignment, if that's the case for you. But we say at this point, uh, thank you very much for taking a little tour with us and uh, try, not, try to watch your step on the way out, as they say sometimes on the tour buses. Uh, we hope you have a good day and that the rest of your uh, semester and fall go really well.